From Washington, this is VOA News. I'm Victor Beatty reporting Russia under pressure to end its Syrian air campaign. Members of the International Syrian Support Group are meeting in Munich Thursday as Russia is criticized for causing widespread civilian casualties in its air campaign in support of government forces. The meeting in Germany is aimed at finding ways to end the fighting and allow access for humanitarian aid. U.S. officials say Russia is proposing a March 1st ceasefire, while Washington insists it must be immediate. U.S. spokesman Mark Toner Wednesday said Washington wants to see a resumption of peace talks suspended last week. We want to get those talks back up and running. At the same time, you know, when the ISSG met uh, last November, uh, it was agreed that we needed a ceasefire put in place as soon as possible. That was part and parcel of uh, uh, UN Security Council Resolution 2254. So we need to pursue that. And given uh, the facts on the ground, uh, the increase in fighting over the past several days and the alarming number of refugees uh, headed towards the border with Turkey, uh, and uh, displaced people internally. It's just an added sense of urgency to get that uh, ceasefire in place. Members of the UN Security Council have pressed Moscow to halt its airstrikes around the embattled northern city of Aleppo, where one rights group says more than 500 have been killed this month. Meanwhile, Turkey's Prime Minister Ahmed Dovatolu said Syrian and Russian military operations are an effort to drive people out who don't support the Bashar al-Assad government. He said these attacks are intended to bring about what he called a kind of ethnic cleansing in Syria. The African Union force in Somalia is warning that al-Shabaab militants are planning to disguise themselves as AU soldiers to carry out attacks. The goal, it says, is to turn Somalis against Amazon, which has protected the government for the past nine years. This is how Shabab obtained uniforms from Amazon camps. This is VOA News. North Korea says it's expelling all South Koreans from the joint Kaesong Industrial Zone, calling Seoul's decision to suspend operations over the North's missile and nuclear activities a declaration of war. In Washington Wednesday, the U.S. Senate unanimously approved tougher sanctions on Pyongyang and its foreign suppliers. The measure targets its trade in minerals and other activities that generate hard currency. Senator Robert Menendez said the action is necessary because the U.N. has so far failed to act. It is not enough to convene the United Nations Security Council for another round of hollow rhetoric that does nothing to the Kim regime but signal a lack of international commitment to enforcing international will. The House of Representatives passed similar legislation last month. It's unclear if President Obama will sign it into law. South Korea, meanwhile, has confirmed that the chief of North Korea's military was executed this month on corruption and other charges. Army General Ri Yong-gil, chief of staff of the Korean People's Army, also face charges of pursuing personal gain. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un has purged a series of officials to bolster his grip on power. The head of the U.S. Central Bank, Janet Yellen, warned Wednesday that falling financial markets and global economic weakness could slow the pace of interest rate hikes in the U.S. These developments, if they prove persistent, could weigh on the outlook for economic activity in the labor market. Although declines in longer-term interest rates and oil prices provide some offset. Speaking to U.S. lawmakers, she said the Federal Reserve remains confident the U.S. economy is on track for stronger growth and a slight increase in inflation. The head of the Kenyan Athletics Federation, Isaac Mwangwi, has dismissed allegations by two banned athletes that he asked them for bribes to reduce their suspension. These ladies, their cases, now that it is the public domain, was informed to them in Beijing, China. If it was informed in Beijing, China, how then can the Federation bring it back and say, do you give money? And then, it's not possible. How? Joyce Sakara and Francisca Koki Manunga say Mwangi asked each 
for $24,000 to reduce the four-year bans after they tested positive for a banned substance during last year's World Championship. The U.S. Federal Bureau of Investigation says the last four protesters still hold up at the remote Mahler National Wildlife Refuge in Oregon have indicated they will give up their occupation Thursday after taking over the facility January 2nd. The standoff began after two ranchers were returned to prison for setting fires that spread to federal land. And a day after the New Hampshire state pre presidential primary election Tuesday, two more Republican candidates dropped out of the race. New Jersey Governor Chris Christie and former Hewlett Packard CEO Carly Fiorina suspended their campaigns. I'm Victor Beatty, VOA News. That's the latest world news from VOA.